So I said, well, is this a fluke or not? So that in my next contentious mediation, I did the same thing and got essentially the same result. And I said, oh, well, I'm on to something now. But that was scary. Sure. And, and for a whole bunch of reasons, it was scary. But I, but I felt that it was right. So I just kept testing and working it and refining my skills. And then in 2007, Matthew Lieberman, who's a neuroscientist at UCLA, came out with a brain scanning study that showed exactly why this technique works and no other technique works. It's called affect labeling. <laughs> and his brain scanning study shows exactly what happens in the brain when you reflect back the feelings and emotions of an upset person. So now I had science behind me and I felt a lot more comfortable going out and teaching it. So I began to teach it at conferences to lawyers and mediators. And then in 2010, uh, with my colleague Laurel Coffer, we started the Prison of Peace Project, where we were invited by lifers in the most largest, most violent women's prison in the world uh, to come in and teach them how to be peacemakers cause, because they were tired of the violence. And we got permission to come in and do a pilot program. and. Uh, it's it's been crazy ever since. So yeah, we're the prison piece is now in 15 California prisons, a prison in Connecticut, 14 prisons in Greece, and we've got startups in Kenya and Italy. Of course, the pandemic has shut everything down, so who knows when we're going to get back in? But we now are videotaping our entire curriculum, so any prison in the world can have access to our curriculum via via video, which would be really cool. And what we did, when, I, when we designed the curriculum, we decided that the very first skill we were going to teach was this de-escalation skill. Because these people are dealing in violent situations, and if they're going to be peacemakers, mediators, they need to have something that's going to work the first time, every time, without fail, no questions asked. And there is no room for screwing around and no room for error in these environments. They're extremely violent. And yeah, that's yeah. exactly what happened. And these inmates were incredible, amazing, powerful people who, once they learned these skills, became model inmates. And many of them have been released. We have zero reports of recidivism of any of our inmates who have gone through our training. And Oh, no, no, zero. And though those that, those that we have trained, of course, that are still in prison, you know, their prisons are, are relatively quiet, peaceful places compared to the way they were, the yards compared to the way they were before Prison of Peace was introduced onto a yard. And we've got all kinds of letters from wardens and people saying, you know, talking about the changes. So that's wow. basically kind of the course of all of this. And, and the inmates bugged me for years to write my fourth book because they were seeing the transformations in themselves and their families were commenting on how they were changing. And they said, could you please write a book? We know you're an author. Could you please write a book about this so that we have something that we can re refer our families to? So that's what led to my fourth book, Deescalate, How to Calm an Angry Person in 90 Seconds or Less, which was at a direct request of the inmates. And in the book, I, I tell a lot of inmate stories because it, they are powerful stories that illustrate the power of this kind of listening. Yeah, so I'm, I'm 10 pages into this thing right now, and I've already like got chills uh, just from the stories so far of, of what you uh, wrote so far. I can't wait to get to the rest of it. Are you reading while he was talking? Is that what was happening there? No, I was, I was trying to figure out, because it's effect label. He said that phrase. Affect labeling. Affect Keeping, labeling. Yeah, so it's, that's a technical term. We call it affect labeling. What we're trying to do is distinguish the type of emotional listening that we teach, that I teach, from the old-fashioned active listening and communication, both of which don't work. Never have, never will. They can't work. They won't work. They're still taught all over the place. But that's just because people don't know any better. But you never use an I statement when you're when you're listening to somebody else. And this is a this is a mistake that goes all the way back to the 1960s to a psychologist, Roger Gordon, who invented the term active listening. And his work was misconstrued, typically, and people picked it up in the human potential movement. And you know we just can't get it out of our system to use this, these I statements and also stay away from emotions. And you talk to most psychologists will tell you this stuff is stupid and it doesn't work and they don't know what they're talking about the research and they haven't done the they haven't done the science like we have so because it's I always fun to it's always fun to to talk about that because you know a lot of people wonder about the you versus i statement so that's a very big part of the process that we teach and in the beginning it's a little weird you know if i'm going to tell you big and hey man you're really pissed off you're really <laughs> frustrated you're really angry you don't feel like anybody's listening to you you feel completely unsupported and unappreciated. It's kind of making you sad. And it's a little scary. 
So that's 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 what affect labeling is. What I did just there, just using statements and reflecting back your emotional experience, and that takes some getting used to. But once you learn it, you never go back because you see the power, the transformative power this form of listening has on people. Do I really look pissed off? Because I'm I'm trying not to. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's so different than what what I'm taught in therapy. It's the repeat back of like. I hear you say yeah, bullshit. this and then always say like, I feel blah, blah, blah. Okay. It's, it, not... it's correct to say, I feel. Okay. You're going to use an I statement when you're asserting your own feelings and experiences. That's correct use of I statement. Okay. It's an incorrect use of an I statement to say, oh, what I think you're feeling is, or I'm sensing that. Whenever I use an I statement talking about you, it all, it's now all about me and your brain shuts off. All of these okay. great things that Lieberman discovered don't happen when you use an I statement. They only so happen you, when you use statement. You say you feel blah, 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 not I, f I think you feel. That's right. Exactly right. Okay. So in your book, it says on the front cover, because again, I'm only nine pages in, uh, <laughs> how to calm an angry person in 90 seconds or less. So how do you do that? Now, I don't, please go out, uh, get the book, read the book or whatnot. I don't want to give out any secrets. Oh, there are no um, secrets here. I can explain it. And the 90 yeah. seconds is interesting because it really takes about 30 seconds. But when, when the publisher and I, uh, the editors and I kind of got into it over, over, well, how fast is this? And, well, no, 30 seconds, that's just two, 90 seconds is unbelievable enough. <laughs> so, and I, so here's how we do it. Three okay. steps. Uh, everybody take out a pencil and paper, write this down, and then buy the book because the, just knowing the three steps intellectually is not going to help you. You've got to really get the book, take my courses, you know, learn how to do this stuff. Okay. It's, it's easy to state, take some practice to master. Step number one, you're confronted with any kind of upset person or even a happy person. This works really well with children, uh, especially happy children. But you're, you, you are seeing somebody who's emotional, either happy or positive or negative. The first thing you're going to do is ignore their words. Now, we'll use anger as an example because that's the title of the book. When somebody is angry, um, we can ignore the words. We've heard those angry words many, many, many times before. There's no new news here. So we can afford to ignore the words for 90 seconds. And the reason that we're going to ignore the words is for two reasons. One, we don't want to get triggered ourselves by those angry words, especially if they're directed at us. And two, we need bandwidth to do the next two steps. So the first thing we have to learn how to do is treat those angry words as pure white noise. There's nothing there okay. that I'm going to pay any bit of attention to. Step number two, you're going to read the emotional data field of this upset, angry person. And the thing that what most people don't realize is that emotions comes in groups of emotions. Now, then you never have just one emotion. You have multiple emotions all grouped together. And so what we want to do is label all of those emotions. So, but how do you know what emotions there are? Well, it turns out that our brains through evolution have this innate ability to read other people's emotions with a great deal of accuracy very quickly and effortlessly. It's not a skill that we practice because, you know, our society is biased against emotional competency. So, so you don't learn how to do it, but it's pretty simple. You just sit in silence and just say, what do they ask yourself the question, what's this person feeling right now? And the answer will pop into your head and you'll be right. And then whatever pops into your consciousness, that's what you say. You'll say, okay, Bism, you're really pissed off, man. And so then the again, third, I'm, I'm that's the mad. third step. I'm not angry. I <laughs> the third step is to do just that. The emotion pops into your head and now you're going to reflect it back with a simple use statement. You are, feel, you are or you feel whatever the emotional experience is. And anger, of course, is a, is a presenting emotion, but it has many, many emotions underneath it that where the anger is just the presenting emotion. They are angry, yes, but there are many other emotions underneath that are driving that anger. And what we want to do is validate those underlying hidden emotions and bring them to the surface so that the speaker, the angry person's prefrontal cortex can process that information. And what Lieberman study shows is that when you do this, the emotional centers of the brain, primarily the amygdala, are inhibited, while the prefrontal cortex, primarily the lateral prefrontal cortex, is activated and comes back online. And it's kind of this uh, correlational, inverse correlation between 
uh, being emotional and being getting your rationality back. And when you affect label somebody, you are literally lending them your prefrontal cortex for the time it takes their prefrontal cortex to come back online, and they calm down hmm. every time without fail. Every human being on the planet, it'll work on any human being on the planet, in any okay. culture, because all our brains are hardwired the same way. It's based on hard neuroscience. It's not based on pop psychology or any theory or anything like that. I mean, there's hard science behind this. And I've seen it myself. I've had, I've had students in Asia use this in Asian cultures, Indian cultures. You, you pick a culture in the world. I haven't taught all, all cultures, but pretty much Europe. I mean, every, you know, I've got students all over the place, and yeah. they all report the same effect. Different languages. Doesn't matter. Wow. So why don't we hear this more in mainstream? Like, because, I mean, well, you look at everywhere, everybody is just on edge. It feels like everybody's about to blow. Well, first of all, first of all, most of the pop psychology is based on pop psychology. It's not based on science, like Freud, for example. You know, Freud was brilliant, but he was dead wrong. There's nothing that Freud wrote about. <laughs> there's nothing he's ever, not, there is no double, double-blinded empirical studies that have proven anything that Freud said or wrote about was right. His whole theory of mind is just plain wrong. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, his stuff has gotten into lay psychology, pop psychology, and it's just really hard to dislodge. But I think the more enduring problem is that we have been lied to for 4,000 years by theologians and philosophers who have told us that what makes us different from other animals is our rationality. What makes us human is our rationality. And they are so, they ha they are so wrong. They're so wrong that it's abusive. Because what separates us from other animals is our emotions. No other, an no other animals have emotions. Only humans have emotions. And we are 98% emotional and only 2% rational. In fact, even economists today, finally, they've come around to the idea that we have this thing called bounded rationality. Because their economic models never worked out. They, they do these elegant economic models about utility theory and rational choice theory, but it never proved out in the real world. And it took people like Dan O'Reilly and other behavioral economists, and, and or before him, Daniel Kahneman and Amos Tversky, to show that we all our decisions are emotional. Yeah. We justify them with rationality, but we make them emo they're made emotionally first. Yeah. Well, this is a really bitter pill for people to swallow. You know, I, I'm active on LinkedIn, and I'm out there on Wednesdays and Fridays po posting stuff, and I've, the last couple of weeks I've been doing, posting some polls. And I found that the vast majority of people on LinkedIn think that approaching an angry colleague with either problem solving or rationality is the right way to do it. And of course, those are the two worst things you can do. Mm. And, you know, it's just there's just a profound ignorance and fear, a lot of fear. People are really afraid of emotions. Yeah. And so and, and, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think fear really, it drives a lot. I mean, it drives that anger. I mean, it's the root emotion of most of that right is a lot of it ultimately we're they're different. There, are, there are 11 different kinds of anger so it really depends on what kind of anger you're talking about but fear can okay. certainly be a, a dri one big driver of of anger but when it comes to dealing with emotions almost all of us are emotionally abused growing up our parents can't help themselves they, they abuse us they may love us but they're still abusing us it's a deep and pervasive and insidious abuse called emotional invalidation i'll give you an example all of us we're all four guys here Remember when we were two or three years old, and we're out running around, having a blast, and we fall down, skin our knees, and start to cry? What are we told? Suck it up, buttercup. That's right. <laughs> don't be a sissy. Stop crying. Be a manly man. Big, big boys don't cry. And we're fed that, that, those lines for all of our childhood into our teens and into adulthood. And what is that teaching us? It's teaching us that emotions are bad. Emotions are evil. Emotions are weak. Emotions, you can't be a man. Well, it's happened. Women, it turns out that women have the same problem. Um, you're, you're bad, weak, not worth anything if you're emotional. Yeah. So we're de we are being denied that which makes us human, our emotionality. And it's, it's wrong and it's abusive. And in fact, there's just research study after research study that shows how this causes drug addiction, criminality, um, breakup, divorces, misery in life, depression, PTSD. I mean, there's so much suffering as a result of this early childhood abuse that every single parent inflicts on their children unknowingly. 96% yeah. of the families are dysfunctional emotionally. 
So you got to think that kids that are coming out of those families are going to be pretty dysfunctional themselves. As I was, as pro I'm, I'm going to guess you guys were too, and you don't even know it until you start studying this stuff. And then you, like the veil is lifted and you start seeing it and you say, oh my God, no wonder there's so much conflict. No wonder people are in prison. Yeah, I look at just even toxic masculinity of, like you were saying, like, we've got to be a man. We can't show any emotion. And, and when, when, cause I'm an emotional guy. Like I, I've, I cry all the time on the show. Um, and you know, when you do that, it do, it breaks down other men to, to feel vulnerable so that they could do that. And it's just a, you know, a domino effect where that happens. And it's, it's incredible. Remember the Tai Chi paradoxes, right? Soft to be strong, vulnerable to be powerful. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's the secret. I think somebody said that. Maybe Jesus. I don't. I don't know. Maybe. No, no. This is from Tai <laughs> Maybe Jesus said some other stuff, but <laughs> along the same lines. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, gentlemen, do you have questions? I, I don't want to take up all the time. I have so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> Start at the top. First one that comes into your head. Uh, okay, so back to the most recent example. I have a four-year-old boy. Perfect. Okay. I need to go talk to him right now. Take pause the show for a second. <laughs> um, I don't know if you know the answer for this, but like he is over what I would consider oversensitive to pain. Like he could he, be. It doesn't take the 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 smallest imperfection, like itty bitty scratch, cut into the world, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we try. I mean. I try not to be the, you have to be macho, but you gotta be a little bit tough. Try not to be, I mean, you gotta be. The, you have try to be this macho, first, you try this for a couple of months tough. and just see if there's a change. Be, the, yeah. just try this so he cuts yeah. himself, it's no, it's a total just, minor insignificant. He, he pinched yeah. himself yeah. on Lego so today. He cuts himself. Himself. I couldn't it's see minor. the wound. I was like, where does it, it hurt? I don't see anything. Yeah. It's not about the cut. Yeah. It's not about, it's about his emotional experience. He's really looking for emotional validation. And he's using the excuse of a wound to try to get that validation. So you give him the validation because it's really healthy for his brain. So he mock pretends that he's got a cut and he's having a tantrum, a meltdown or whatever he has. Just stay with him for about 90 seconds and reflect back these kinds of emotions. What's his name? Luke. Luke. Oh, Luke, man, that must really hurt. You're really scared and kind of anxious and it's kind of scary to feel this way. And you're feeling like nobody's listening to you and it really hurts and you're scared. That's all you really need to say. Sometimes you, sometimes you go a little deeper. You say, like, sometimes you feel all alone. You're abandoned. Nobody loves you because that's how children feel a lot. Not true, but that's how they feel. Mm. And just watch. He'll say, yeah, that's what he's going to do. He's gonna, yeah. And then you, you nod of the head. Yeah, his shoulders are going to drop and he's going to relax and it's over with in less than 30 seconds. You do that to him every time he's in upset. doesn't matter what the cause is. Just validate his emotions. In four months, won't be a problem anymore. You'll reprogram his brain. All right. And All you right. can email me. You can email me in four we'll months, do, and I'll send we'll you a, a follow up. <laughs> in, uh, yeah. August. No, give, give it a try. I literally, I have parents that I've trained over the years, and they report how they had a two-year-old or three-year-old who just had constant tantrums and meltdowns. And what, what they don't understand, most parents are not taught about neuroscience and, and neuroscience of, of uh, childhood development. But tantrums are the brain's way, the baby's brain way of protecting it against harm. Hmm. So a tantrum is like a fuse blowing. The baby, the baby, the toddler is overstimulated and can't handle anymore. And so the brain goes into meltdown to protect the brain from serious damage. And that's what a tantrum is all about. It's just an overload protection, like an overload voltage. All you have to do is ethic label the child in language that's appropriate to the, to the age. Oh, you're really tired. You're really scared. You know, you're really frustrated. You know, stuff like that, whatever's going on. And it'll, 30 seconds, gone. I guarantee it. I guarantee I'll try, it. I'll try it's it probably tomorrow. How, so. It's how the brain is hardwired. And people can't believe that something that apparently this simple is so powerful. And everybody wants, well, well, how come we didn't know this before? Well, we brain, brain scanning technology has only been out since 93. 
So, I mean, hardly even, not even 30 years yet. And, you know, this stuff is so new. And, and most neuroscientists you talk to, they won't even know about these studies because they're all studying other stuff. So there are just very few, very few neuroscientists who are looking at these kinds of issues. Their papers get buried in journals. It takes somebody like me, who's a, not a neuroscientist, but understands neuroscience, to go rooting through all the research to find, to find the papers and studies that, that offer insight. And then my job is to take what they have demonstrated about the brain and turn it into a, in an intervention, something that will work. And that's what I do. Because, I, you know, I'm a peacemaker and a mediator. People pay me big bucks to come in and solve really difficult problems. I better have tools that work. Yeah. So I go to the science to find solutions. How do I get my wife not to go to Olive Garden anymore? Because I'm tired of that argument. <laughs> <laughs> she can go by herself. <laughs> there you go. That's perfect. Magic Man, I thought you were going to say something. No, just... And I mean this as a compliment. <laughs> it sounds like I'm going to oh, say oh. it's bad, but no, oh boy! I mean, I mean, this is good. This is good. Here we go. What um, the instructions, uh, Doug, that you just gave uh, producer Brian with dealing with his child reminds me kind of uh, the way somebody who I think is a national treasure did it when he was dealing with kids, Mister Rogers, mm. because he he talked. I mean, he basically put himself down at. at at a child's level, if it, so to speak, to relate to them and, and said that, you know, things just like you feel, you feel lonely, don't you? You know, and that's how children were able to relate with him. That's uh, right. And he was but able he, to, to teach Adults are the same way. Don't ask questions. Yeah. So don't say you're lonely, are you? No. Oh, you're lonely. Mm -hmm. Sad. Um, Mr. Rogers epitomized a lot of that early stuff again this guy roger gordon who invented active listening actually was quite instrumental in doing this sort of work with children he he was on the right track his work was misinterpreted gordon himself was correct in what he was doing it was his work that was misinterpreted by other psychologists who got it all wrong and the other uh the other there's another guy uh, gordon newfeld who's a ch developmental psychologist out of vancouver british columbia who is just brilliant and he doesn't use affect labeling, but he talks about why this kind of process works with children. He talks about uh, uh, developing emotional maturity and just really great theoretical stuff. So there are a lot of people out there that are really doing the work, um, but it's just not getting into the mainstream yet, which is why I do these podcasts, because the more people I can reach. And, you know, it's not for everybody, but maybe one out of 10 or one out of 100 will maybe grab a book or give me a call or take one of my courses and learn this stuff, and their lives will be changed forever. I know, because I've, I've seen so many lives change forever. With, with, the, with neurology and the brain function and everything, and you said it works 100% of the time, what about um, in cases where there's, where's, there's brain damage or brain dysfunction? Brain dysfunction. <laughs> Yeah, it depends. That's why I don't use the term mental illness. There's no such thing as mental illness. There's brain dysfunction. Okay. And it can be caused by a lot of different things. Right. Okay, so we're dealing with some kind of dysfunction in the brain. It could be physical or it could be how the wiring is set up. It, it could be lots of different things, C cognitive, lots of, lots of different dysfunctions. It depends on the kind of dysfunction. Okay. About the only kind of disorder that I've experienced where I don't think this will work very well is when you're when you have to deal with an overt maladaptive narcissist um, maybe extreme sociopathy or, or uh, psychopathy where people have no empathy they have no they're deeply alexithemic they don't have any ability to relate to their own emotions those kinds of deep brain dysfunctions this will be more challenging having said that I have worked with some of the most violent inmates at least in california which are probably would be representative of the population very violent right. people and they've completely transformed their lives when they learn these skills wow. and in, in really truly miraculous and amazing ways so i do believe in in neuroplasticity which is the idea that we we're not set in as long as we've got enough brain cells in there enough neurons you know we got a couple of billion give or take uh, we can reprogram our brains in many, many powerful ways, and the brain will make up for deficits by co-opting other parts of the brain to take over functions. So being put into the right environment with the right kind of training uh, over a period of time, there's always hope. Always hope.
there's a phrase that you've you've used several times is uh, you you felt listened to. Yes, listening up to existence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm think that seems to be key just for anything is we we as a society and as individuals just do not feel listened to and yeah. you see that through black lives matter you see that through just individual lives like we just don't hear hear that that's right all of the injustice that people are talking about which is all real is really all about being validated and being heard and being listened to and being respected you know and, and most people in my experience don't need to be right they have a need to be right they have a need yeah. to be heard and once they're heard, then you can have the conversation around whatever the topic is. And the reason that we are not listened to is because most of us have never experienced emotional safety. Because mm -hmm. of this family dysfunction that I talked about, we all, we all, until you learn these skills and it changes you, we've got walls around us. So we can be emotionally shut down or we can be emotionally unavailable but for both men and women. And, you know, even in relationships where there's a loving relationship, it can only get so intimate because it gets any more intimate than that, then you're going through the wall where it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. And this is all due to childhood pain, emotional pain inflicted by parents when they emotionally invalidate. And we learn how to protect ourselves from that pain. But the stuff that we used in childhood to protect ourselves is, does not serve us well in adulthood. The good news is you can reprogram and relearn this stuff. But that's why we're not listened to. And that's why, because we don't allow ourselves to connect with people in a, in a way that would allow us to listen appropriately until you start learning and practicing these skills. And the thing about learning these skills is once you, when, as you start to practice, it's like a bubble forms around you. And I can have somebody just spitting in my face, spitting angry. Now their hands better not come up. Their hands come up, then my hands come up and you want, don't want to be around don't me. Want my, my chi comes out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But, but they can be spitting angry at me, and I'm, I don't care. Oh, man, you are really angry. And what I feel is deep compassion. And I'm not reactive, I'm not triggered. I feel compassion for them. I feel, I feel their anger and their pain, and they're just experiencing their pain. And fortunately, I'm in a place where what they say, what they do, as long as they don't take a step towards me, is perfectly okay. And I can be there. They can be as angry as they want to be. And I'm, I'm going to hold safe space for them to, to be angry like that. And that's why they calm down. Because I'm yeah, safe. I, I think that's so countercultural of people are just spewing and they just want that reaction. And if right. you don't give them that reaction, it just kind of goes against the wall. And It's like watching a balloon deflate. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I get, you know, I've got a big YouTube following and social media and I get these snarky comments every now and then and, and all I do is affect label them. Oh man, you're really pissed off. You're really angry. You don't feel listened to. You don't feel heard. They go away. Yeah. Never hear from them again. <laughs> the instant foolproof way to get rid of snarkiness. <laughs> and it's a great way to demonstrate the tech, the skills in writing in text. Nice. Uh, Ryan, do you have any questions? I think I saw in your uh, biography that you're a pilot. Yeah, I fly airplanes and helicopters. Okay, yeah, I was just curious uh, which, like, which certifications and such. I know this is kind of I'm a, off topic. I'm a, pilot, I'm a private pilot, instrument rated, tailwheel endorsement, and I've got a rotor, rotorcraft endorsement so I can fly helicopters. Although I haven't flown a helicopter in forever. I haven't really flown much in the last couple of years anyways. But yeah, so and I've flown, I've got 2,000 hours flight time in both. Goodness. And I've got a multi-engine rating too, so... Oh, that, that's good. Um, do you um, did did you say you had an IFR rating as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, instrument okay. rated. Instrument rating. Yeah. Do you fly often, or do you? Um... Well, I don't. I haven't. I haven't flown in the last couple of years. I uh, um, I flew a lot because because I was traveling a lot, speaking and teaching, and so I have a little RV six, which is a little experimental airplane, hand, hand built, uh, little speedster, flies super fast, two hundred miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would fly all over California, really fly all, all over the West, and. I use that, but but then a lot of that work stopped, and so and I'm not a person that goes out to fly to go buy a hamburger. I, I I'm not a recreational pilot. <laughs> I was trained as a professional pilot, and so right now I'm not flying. So that means that if I want to go out to fly, I got to get the airplane inspected and start it up again, and then I have to go back through and get all my currency back up. So it's just time, it's time and money, and of course with the pandemic, what's the point? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? So, but yeah, I put on a lot of hours and flew all over the place and. You know, did like, 
just looking at your biography again, you're a jazz violinist, yeah. aircraft and helicopter pilot, ski instructor, second yeah. degree black belt, Tai Chi master, yeah. white water rafter. Like, yeah. What else can you like? You're like the most amazing person on the planet. Like, I mean, that's so cool. What happened? What happened? First of all, I don't own a television set. <laughs> so I don't watch television. Well, Okay, okay, so that, that frees up a lot of time. Well, I was going to ask if you know what the A team is because you reminded me of Hannibal, but I guess if you yeah. watch TV, then you. <laughs> <laughs> what happened was uh, that I, I got, I had a lot of problems. I was born blind and deaf and two club feet, and I mean, I was born a mess. And in the, those days in the 50s, people had very little patience for me to train me, to teach me. I was left handed, nobody wanted to mess with me. I was too hard and I was super smart. So I had to learn how to teach myself. And I had so many bad instructors and so many bad coaches and so many bad teachers that I finally made up my mind that I will never, ever, ever subject anybody else to what I had to go through, the pain I went through of people not having the patience to really break things down. Mm. So I started learning stuff that I was really interested in. For example, I don't play golf. Well, why don't I play golf? Because I don't want to put the three thousand. I don't. I'm just not motivated to put three thousand hours in that I know it would take me to become a scratch golfer. I could become a scratch golfer in three or four years. It's going to take me three or four thousand hours of practice to get there. I know exactly what it's going to take. Jazz violin. I mean, same thing. I knew, but I but I played Irish and Irish and old timey fiddle. I taught myself fiddle in law school, and so I wanted to learn jazz. So I said, okay, I'm going to learn jazz. I know exactly what it's going to take. It's years and years and years of pain, <laughs> you know, painful, boring, <laughs> tedious practice to get the skills down. And it's the same thing with all of these things. I just decided, Jay, yeah, I'm going to really want to take this up. And I take it up and I find a really good teacher. I know what kind of a teacher I need. And then I go for it. And I don't do anything else. I just focus on that one thing until I get it mastered. I want to make sure one thing at a time and you spend all you do is spend 15 or 20 minutes a day on one thing every single day you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish in a year or two hmm. most people don't get that they think that oh I'll, I can never be a jazz violinist because I don't can't, don't have ear I didn't have ear I didn't have rhythm wow. when my teacher started me I couldn't cross crawl Cross crawling is what you learn as a baby because I didn't start walking until I was three years old. So I missed out on all that development. So cross crawling, where you put your, I had to get in my, on my hands and knees with a metronome and, and slow it way down and go and say to myself, left hand, right knee, right hand, left knee mm-hmm. to the metronome. Ba, ba, ba. That slow. I couldn't do it. I could not do it. So when people say, oh, gee, I don't have any musical talent, I say, well, neither do I. That doesn't mean you can't develop it. Now, am I going to play at Carnegie Hall? No. But am I going to be a very proficient jazz player? Am I a proficient jazz player that you like to listen to? Absolutely. And that's, that's all it is. But you got to be willing to learn. you have any albums? No. <laughs> My wife has one album, <laughs> but I don't have any albums. Whoa. What does your wife do or say? My wife is a sound healer. Okay. And produces meditations online. She's got over 2,000 meditations online. And she teaches uh, a bunch of courses. She works with, in, in some ways, she's sort of the therapist of the therapist. She has a lot of psychologists and therapists that work with her because she has a way of seeing things that really help people work through their blocks. And she's really, really good at it. She's got booked out a year, got an international clientele. I mean, she's incredibly well, you, you can plug her if, you'd li- if, you, if you want to. Pardon me? You can plug her if you want to. <laughs> Alea Dow, A-L-E-Y-A-D-A-O, aleadow.com. Very powerful woman. Very cool. Uh, I want to make sure that you have enough time to plug all your stuff. So, uh, <laughs> Well, thanks. Go, go ahead. So, and, and again, you've got a class coming yeah, up. Yeah, so if, if, this, if this stuff is intriguing, absolutely. you and the audience. So here's how you, here's how you, here are the resources. The first resource is my website, dougnoll.com, D-O-U-G-N-O-L-L.com. Tons of articles, obviously all free. Um, I've got courses. I don't have any courses on that website that are that are over two hundred dollars. So, and they are really powerful courses. So, if you really want to get into the training, that's the way to do it. And there's also, of course, links to my book, my all my books, but the Escalate especially. So that's dougnoll.com. I have a YouTube channel with I don't know sixty, seventy public videos that explain all different aspects of this work. 
and so you can go on to just Google me, Douglas Noel YouTube, and you'll find all my different YouTube talks. And I've got, you know, I've got social, you know, I'm obviously have the usual platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, although I don't hang out on social media very much. Um, but you can certainly reach me through those various avenues. And my email address, because I'm a solopreneur, I'm just it. I don't have an entourage, I don't have advisors, I don't have, you know, there's no firewall between me and you. So you can always email me at Doug at DougNoll.com with any questions, and I answer all my own emails. I'm very accessible. Uh, very cool. Well, I'm excited. We'll, uh, I'll be reading through this book. Uh, future podcasts, we'll talk about it, I'm sure. And um, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, wow. It, my brain's about to explode of all this stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for having me and yeah. for giving me the opportunity to share with you some of these radical, innovative, counterintuitive, and counter-normative ideas that are, are literally going to change the world. Wow. I'm and my job is to it. get them out there so that we can start seeing some of this stuff happen in our lifetimes. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you, sir. Again. Okay, uh, good enough. I'll, I'll sign off and right, see you later. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Wow. My head is about to explode. Like, uh, yeah, that's amazing. I haven't heard that many six syllable words ever. <laughs> I, I mean, it makes sense, right? Like, like just, and again, we're trying to go through logic and rational, uh, but, well, it, that. <laughs> <laughs> right. but if you think about it, I mean, again, if you, just don't react to somebody that's exploding that automatically, like you said, the, the balloon deflates and they're like, now what? So yeah. that's the first step is because every, you know, I don't know about you guys, but when my wife starts, you know, and she doesn't yell often or, you know, whatnot, but like, you know, when, when you know, it's coming, like all of a sudden I'm like tense up and I'm like, Oh, here it comes. And I'm already getting ready to explode back. Um, but if I can just let it go over, there we go. I think it's more for me though. Like if I can, if I could teach myself not to explode on myself, I think that would be great too. Mm. So, anyway, but, uh, thoughts, thoughts, ideas. I wanted to ask him if hanger was a, one of the 11 types oh. of anger, but uh, I didn't one. want to take up too much more time. Cause I think that might've taken a while to, 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 yeah. deep in, to dive into <laughs> The last, I, I should, because I'm also, again, being in uh, California, I should have asked aliens or Bigfoot, and I had it on my head, and I just totally forgot about it. I mean, oh, where man. he lives, I mean, Bigfoot's like right outside the door. I mean, right yeah, there. Neighbor. I mean, I'm sure he's seen Bigfoot. He has to have seen Bigfoot. We should add that to his profile. Yeah, seen, right. A senior of Bigfoot. Senior. Senior. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Um, <clears throat> What do you want to do? Just pause and then we'll go for the rest of it. Uh, go ahead and do the closing just okay. for editing sake. All right. So that was Doug Knoll. Um, it, listen, I've got his book deescalate again. Like I said, I think I'm, I'm going to read through and, and see how much of this I could apply. I would love to be able to calm an angry person down in 90 seconds, preferably me. Um, so I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about it more uh, in the upcoming shows. Uh, next week, though, we have our friends from Grill Rescue. And uh, you remember last year I bought this handy-dandy grill cleaner. Um, and so they're going to come on the show, talk a little bit about why they created it, try to save some lives, you know, with grilling season coming up. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to have them on to talk about how important it is to clean your grill properly. Mm. So it, it sounds like it's not fascinating, but it really is. Uh, so anyway, all that and more next week on the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast. And as always, keep looking up. Da, 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 da. <laughs> All right. You should play A team on the end of it. <laughs> uh, I've got that somewhere. <laughs> have, have you ever noticed our theme song kind of sounds like Inagata Devita? <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's a classic rock. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think our song sounds like a classic song. I didn't. But say I'll go back and listen to it. <laughs> classic rock, not classic. Inagata Devita. Inagata Devita by Iron Maiden. 
Oh, oh. It's like 70s. It was like a classic song. No, it's the 70s. Yeah. Look it up. Yeah, I'll have to do that. How do you spell that? <laughs> As he pours. Yeah. Bloop. Okay. Um, where are we at on this? Okay. Upcoming. I've got 52 minutes. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Holy Lord. Yep. All right. <clears throat> All right, we ready to go? Yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, just some upcoming guests. If you and events, listen, again, uh, YouTube subscribers, uh, it's not that difficult. We've got, I think, one more this week or one or two. I need you guys to go back, stop the podcast. We'll even have the link on our show notes. Just click that, hit subscribe, and and turn off your notifications. We really need to get up to a hundred. We would really appreciate you to do that. Um, just go to YouTube, uh, go to the link on the show notes, search SFP radio, click subscribe. You know, the whole deal. I'm tired of talking about it. Let's make it happen. Captain. Yeah, I mean, you um, know, you're on YouTube already, right? Cause I you're already there. Like all day on YouTube. I feel like all day. Just you there. Already just go pop there. over, sit search, Southern fried philosophy, SFP radio. Boom. Search big and see what pops up. I don't know. You, you don't want to do that, though. I've done that. That's not good. Uh, <laughs> if you are staying at home and you want to do your own podcast or you need your podcast edited or video edited, check out uh, headlines at SFP Radio. Just shoot Brian an email and he will get back with you so that he can, you know, do the gibbly gobbly gook to yeah. make your stuff sound great. So there's that. If you want to be a show sponsor, email me at SFP Radio at gmail.com. We would appreciate that. And next week, our friends from Grill Rescue tell the story about saving lives at the grill. Looking forward to have those guys on the show. I want to say shout out to our listeners from New Zealand. How about you? Hey. You know, <clears throat> I don't know if I've said this before. I'm sure I have, but I was in love. My first super crush in high school was a foreign exchange student from New Zealand. Okay. <sighs> I fell hard, gentlemen. I <laughs> fell hard for that one. That was rough. Um, so maybe maybe she's listening. It's a long-distance oh, dedication. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we still need Alaska. So if you know any friends in Alaska, Sarah Palin has not uh, contacted us back. So there's that. Mm. Uh, but we will. One of these days, we'll call Alaska. Hopefully soon. Uh, well, I'm going to ask you like I ask you guys every week. I'll be darned. Magic Man? Oh, okay. I didn't know if I was supposed to wait for her or not. You always go first. I always go first. Yes. Okay. I'll be doing Probably good. Um, very happy. Um, I got my uh, my car. Uh, the air conditioner was out and uh, got it fixed <laughs> late last week. So now I'm ready All for right. the warmer weather. <laughs> like that 30-degree morning we had this morning? Right. Just like that 30-degree morning we had this morning. Yep. Um, got and it. the weather's back. Yep, got it inspected, so now I can uh, pay uh, the state taxes and registration fees and make Boy. it legal. And uh, mm. well, it's still legal till the end of next week. Um, so yeah, yeah, this, doing good. How about how about y'all? Uh, pro- uh, producer Brian, how you been? Oh, I'm good. You know, I just ended up fighting. About, I purchased a truck recently, and it took almost 90 days to get the title. So I've been riding around with a. Uh, 30 day tag oh. has faded out for a long time. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's, we're good now. Um, okay. so last week, uh, I received my syrup delivery syrup, it was syrup. syrup, right? My syrup, syrup delivery from mom and pops world's best Vermont mm. maple syrup. Cause we shipped it to Biggins house and I just hadn't been over there to pick it up. So got my syrup. I got the four pack of the, cause I wanted to sample the, the grades uh-huh. so there's a like uh, i should have brought them in here but uh there's four grades there's like a light amber darker super dark this is what i'm gonna call them so saturday I I morning might, i think i might have it hold on oh do you have the list yeah they're, I, they're not labeled the same way i thought they were going to be labeled oh they're not i well you know what i don't have it but in in producer brian fashion i decided to do a tasting of maple mm-hmm. syrup Four right. little bottles. It was 20 bucks for four bottles. And there's not, I mean, 
maybe you I got can't. The pound I can't decide the, the values cream. there. What's that? Oh, and I got a pound of maple cream. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, <laughs> I tried them all. I got. I just made like some waffles. So it's just real simple waffles, and I tasted yeah. like several times. Went through, tried all the different syrups, trying to oh, figure no. out what this is about. It is, it's syrup, man. I can't. I mean, it's good. It's all very good syrup, but I can't go. I can't pick one. And if okay. you know me, I can always pick the winner, right? Like right. eating something. I, I I can't decide. They're all really. I mean, it's probably the best maple syrup I've ever had in my life, which may not mean a whole lot because I I've, haven't gotten it straight from the tree before, maybe. But it's really good. Well, this it's is really going to be pretty good. close, though. So, are you confirming yeah. that this is the world's best Vermont maple syrup? To me, it's the it's the best Vermont wow. maple syrup I've ever had. So, I mean, again, this is I've had this. I've had like the Target brand. I've had the Cracker Barrel brand. I haven't gone mm-hmm. in pursuit. I haven't tried to win like uh, uh, any of those. Uh, we call them um, store picks of like Vermont mm-hmm. maple syrup or something. You know, you know, trying to right. get the allocated stuff before so. <laughs> Um, yeah, from what I've, my experience, my limited maple experience, it's good stuff. It's so not you, super sweet. I mean, it's sweet, okay. but it's not like maple, 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 you know? Okay. There's no and fake so stuff in there. It, it sounded like at the beginning that you couldn't tell the difference between that and like Aunt Jemima, but that's oh, no, no, not, no, that's not it. I couldn't okay. tell the grades apart. Like the grades. Okay. There's a difference, but it's really subtle. Okay. So you you can be good going either way. I, I like them all. I'm probably going to rotate or something like buy a bottle okay. at a time and just. So nice. they're, they're all really nice. Um, yeah. But then the maple cream. All right. Come on. Okay, so the best way for me to describe this, if you've ever made anything with sweetened condensed milk, mm-hmm. that's the consistency is sweetened. Con- you've had it right, Megan. So I I get a spoon and open that can up and I just go at it. Yeah, well, so it's like maple flavor in the sweet ingredients format, like texture. Like I can mm-hmm. imagine all kinds of applications for this. I just, you know, I started with just a spoon. It's really sweet. <laughs> it's super uh, sweet. And I've tried it on a bagel. That didn't quite do it for me. But tonight we were having breakfast for dinner because it was quick. So I just had this epiphany. So I took a piece of toast and I put okay. some maple cream on there. And then I took some bacon and put it on top of there and ate that. Oh man. Son. Oh man. That was f- amazing. Absolutely amazing. I don't know what I'm doing here after the show. <laughs> <laughs> I've got all. You can probably leave off the bread and just dip the bacon in the maple cream. Okay. There you go. Oh, all right, man. It's uh, yeah. Anyway, go get you some. Yeah. Well, that's a good segue on how I'm doing. Uh, (laughs) producer brian uh did something horrible to me uh just last night (laughs) he sent me a message saying hey did you know that Krispy Kreme has free delivery um uh until the end of the week and i looked at it and i said you know what a dozen donuts sound great right now let me go ahead and order some so I get on the app, you know, start using the the promo code free delivery. Now, again, this is why you listen live to the show, people, because this will end on Friday. If you're listening now, you can get it in and be good and good to go tomorrow. But this this offer ends, so you want to listen to the show. Mm. So we're we're doing like a foster care training, and um, <laughs> and and the doorbell, the guy comes in, drops the the Krispy Kreme donuts, and then I they. They then asked the question, like, how's, what's your highs and lows of the week? And so uh, I go, well, my high just dropped, got dropped off at the do- at the door, and I'm going to have some Krispy Kreme donuts here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then uh, going through the app, I realized that tomorrow they're giving, um, they're, they're doing chocolate donuts with chocolate glaze on it. So, yes, please. So I went ahead and ordered another dozen donuts to be delivered at 8.15 tomorrow, what a Friday present to myself. And then, and that's free too. So free delivery. What's for that. the delivery range on those? Uh, um, I don't, I don't know, but I know that it got to my house. I'm probably too far away. Well, you can try it. Uh, by the way, I also sent uh, the same link to Mojo. So you can ask him 
if he did oh, the same thing. <laughs> I did. I did uh, also tell him that, and he called me a devil. So there's that. Uh, but uh, alas, I think I might put some of that maple cream on a Krispy Kreme donut. Oh, yeah. Oh, you have to tell us how to, that goes. Go into yeah. a coma. How about? Yeah. Uh, so on a sad note, I do want to, to talk about this. Um, if, uh, if you listen to the show for quite a while, um, especially like a long while, uh, episode 101, we had uh, a guy, a gentleman named Gary Moore on the show and he was the pilot. I don't know if you guys remember, uh, that particular episode. Um, but he, uh, recently just passed away and, uh, we're asking, the SFP family just to say prayers uh, to for his family. Uh, I know he's, he leaves back, uh, behind some children and a wife. Um, what an awesome guy um, that that he was. Uh, just had a great smile, a great laugh, uh, but uh, he tragically passed, and not a pilot I- issue. So so there's that. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you if you have time, if it, if you're listening to the show, driving, whatnot, just say a prayer for Gary Moore's family. Uh, what a stand up gentleman he was, and um, you know if you want to go back, listen to episode 101, you can uh, maybe um, remember remember him through that. So uh, you know, part of the show is like you meet all these people from different aspects of life, and you get to meet people that you never would have, and um, you know you got great things, and you got tragedies like this. It's hard to hard to swallow sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I know. I remember Leanne Powell, she was on the show and we loved her at, at Southern Grace Distillery mm-hmm. and, and passed away. Man, that one still hurts. So, um, but um, anyway, I uh, just wanted to pass that along as well. Uh, all right. So our Southern word for the week is uh, if the Creek don't rise, it's a Southern saying you guys have heard that before, of course. Mm-hmm. I have. Yes. Yep. If you want to do our best to keep our promises, but sometimes unforeseen circumstances come up, like trying to meet a friend for lunch or having a car breakdown on the way to cover all your bases, you might want to say, I'll see you then if the creek don't rise. I think Just another I think another variation of that is if the creek don't rise. You know, I was I was watching I was watching uh two different shows and they were like more like California wise side of the side of the 50 states towards the Southern portion, the Crick. Uh, yeah. I, I done it's, heard so, it. Okay. Here's a, here's a question. This is getting yeah. to some, uh, I don't know. Is this geography hour? Maybe. <laughs> there we but, go. Uh, let's, let's so you've got a Creek and you've got a stream. Okay. Is the Crick different than either? Like, is it the same as one of those or is it, Okay, is a creek and a crick the same, or is a crick more like a stream? The stream bigger than a creek. Like, what's the order here? That that's hmm. a very good question. This is the philosophy portion of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Could it be uh, somewhere between a stream and a creek? That's what I, I don't know. That's, I, that's the yeah. I don't use the word crick. I've never heard you use the word creek. So yeah, I don't know that you've heard me use the word creek. So, <laughs> so uh, is it a creek or a creek? A creek is a noun that refers to a shallow stream. Creek is an American dialectual variant. is popular in some genres of fiction. Creek is the standard term in all other contexts. Mm. So, so thanks, Googs. So a creek is a shallow stream. Right. So you have creek, stream, river. river? Mm-hmm. I think so. Tributary, vestibule. What's the, what's the, the uh, next word? Ocean. Like ocean, lake. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's interesting is we have inlet. We have creeks are in our area that drain into rivers. It, it completely skips over the whole stream. Mm. Stream. Yeah, I think like streams the thing in the mountain, like mountain stream. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah they're still called the creeks a lot of times. It's like you know, uh, whatever. Interesting. I digress. Yeah, I digress. Uh, well, listen. So there's a story that I was going to bring up here. Let me let me pull that up. Have you guys ever skipped work before? Yes. Um, Magic Man ever sk- skipped work? Uh, yeah. How how long? How many days have you ever skipped work for the the length of that? Oh, just one. Just yeah, one. Yeah, it was one. 
Yeah. What about I can, for? I can tell you the year too. I think. In the circumstances. Ooh, I'm sorry. I can probably tell you the year and the circumstances if I need to. <laughs> How about 15 years? Uh, an Italian hospital employee acu- was accused for skipping work for 15 years. Uh, the ama- the, uh, the man is alleged to have stopped turning uh, up into work at the Cacao Hospital in the southern city of, I don't know, Canto Rosa in 2005. He's now being investigated for fraud, extortion, and abuse of office. He was reportedly um, paid 538,000 euros in a total over the years and has not worked at all. Six managers of the hospital are also being investigated in connection with the uh, alleged absenteeism. Uh, The employee was a silver servant and was assigned to the job of the hospital in 2005. Uh, It was at this point that he stopped going to work. Uh, There was, uh, he threatened a manager later um, to, to, to not report him and she didn't report him. And then there was a huge turnover in human resources and nobody confirmed if he was still working or not. So he got paid for 15 years without showing up. I mean, remi- that's one, that's one heck of a vacation there. Yeah. That kind of reminds me of that movie office space where they had that one character, Milton, who <laughs> continued oh. to work, even though he was terminated. Was he getting paid? Yeah. He was still getting paid. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, 15 years, y'all. That's a long time. It is. That's a, that's a very long time. How, how do you think it started out where he was just like, I'm just not going to show up today. And then the next day. Yeah, at some point in the checks are still rolling in. And no one's like made a phone call. <laughs> right. I, I don't know. Everybody's that's, checking this out. I, I, that's that's bold. That's, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of. I know that I couldn't get away with it, but you need that. You need that one job where nobody really cares if you're there or not. Like I couldn't do that in mind, but yeah. Yeah. What's the, what's the silver servant? It's just like a civil servant. Yeah. Civil, I, I don't know what civil servant. Civil servant. What does that even mean? I don't know. A civil See, it, you, it's a government job. And that's, that's what the president the is, right? <laughs> right. You, uh, you need to have a government job and then people just don't care about it. Do you have an office? I can't. I can't. <laughs> can't i don't understand <laughs> you remember that episode of, of seinfeld uh where george kept sleeping under his desk he built like a bed <laughs> under there right yeah, yeah. i remember that <laughs> oh that was such a great show uh all right in reverse there was a, a canadian lawmaker that wished he wouldn't show back up to work for 15 years he was caught naked <laughs> during a video conference oh wow a Canadian parliament member was caught start stark naked in a virtual meeting in the House of Commons. Uh, William Amos, who represented the Quebec district of Pontiac since 2015, appeared uh, on the screen of his fellow lawmakers completely naked. He said that he was uh, he just got back from a run, that he was changing his clothes, didn't realize that the camera was on, and was butt naked. That's uh, one. One of the persons says, well, he's obviously uh, works out a lot. And he said, thank you for that compliment. And um, he Hmm. said, I just did not know that my camera was on and didn't realize that. Somebody took a screenshot and, uh, hey, buddy. Uh, But here's the thing. His camera is covering up his stuff. So, I mean, it was well-placed. When he was getting that ready. Nobody okay, saw so all Was of this it. on the co-worker's camera or his camera? His camera. But So was he just in a meet, like just randomly in a meeting? Didn't they, know were getting, they were getting ready to join a meeting. And I guess, you know, you know, like even for our meetings, you know how it says like waiting for somebody yeah, to. That, I guess that almost happened in. tonight because I signed on and your camera was running and there's nothing yep. that would have stopped you from just like streaking by. Right. You know. Yeah. So okay. I'm sure that's probably what I'm, happened. I'm starting to understand the scenario a little bit. <laughs> but said so he was changing clothes and, and he was butt naked. I mean, y'all, you've got to act like there's a camera and a microphone on you all the time. Okay. And this is in Canada. Canada. So my question hey. is, is he fired or do they even care? I don't think that they care. He posted a public apology, said, sorry, I was going for a dog. I was switching clothes. Uh, it was an honest mistake. It won't happen again. And everybody just seemed to kind of laugh it off. Because that, if that happened in the old US of A, there'd be oh, like, Lordy. 
you know, we would need to deescalate right? in That's, 90 seconds. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I thought that those things were pretty interesting and wanted to bring mm-hmm. those to your attention. Um, so there's that. All right. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. The moment we've been waiting for. Let me get my notes ready here. This is the uh, old Chicken Madness Tournament brought to you by Red Hill Brewing. Yep. Thank you, Red Hill, for supporting the competition. Though we don't have any beer tonight, and that's we don't probably have any beer. my fault. That's a, oh, is that your fault? Do you have and, all the beer? Uh, yeah, I do. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get it out to you in time. <laughs> so, Fine. here we go. Thanks we'll, for uh, that. we'll have a, uh, a post review or something we can yeah. if we need to or I'm big enough to just drink it all and we'll never see there it. We go. Either way. You'll never see it. Um, Do we yeah. have music? Oh, yeah, we have music. We got our, our theme song music. This is the big, yeah, you're right. This is you're the right. big this, event. This, this is the, big is the event. championship game. We're coming we in go. like slackers. Chicken Madness Round 7 presented by Red Hill Brewing. The final game. 42 sandwiches have been eaten. Approximately 100 and or 218 dollars has been spent. Mm-hmm. Um, this is it. This is the final game. Can we go ahead and break down the entire bracket? Who, who's got that up? Oh, I can have it up pretty. I'm quickly. displaying it right now. I'm okay. Displaying it well, well that I doesn't help me. Um, hold on. We're professionals, folks. Here we go. All right, I got it. So got it. Uh, right. the one seed Chick-fil-A knocked out McDonald's. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wendy's, the five seed, was overtaken by Zaxby's. Uh, Popeye's was knocked out by KFC, a six seed, a three battle. And then uh, Bojangles took out Arby's. That was um, to get us down to the final four. The final four was Chick-fil-A versus Zaxby's. Zaxby's won that one, a 1-4 matchup. And then KFC beat out Bojangles in a 2-6 matchup to give us to the final game, Zaxby's 4 seed, KFC 6 seed. That's right. Uh, again, just like, you know, for, for a good majority of March Madness, is the, the number one team doesn't always win. Just how it's, it's seeded and it's bracketed and, you know, things happen. Yeah, well, March Madness usually have four number one teams, I guess, right, yeah. technically, but... One of them usually gets pretty far. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we did have some uh, upsets in the final four. We did. Yep. We had the upsets in the, well, <laughs> the first round one upsets. In the grade eight. I think Pop, KFC kind of came out of nowhere. I it did, like. yeah. We, yeah. Like, we no had one that expected up KFC. Popeyes. And so I thought Popeyes was going to, I thought Popeyes was a huge contender to knock it, to knock off KFC, but that was yeah. a huge upset. Like I was filling out a bracket. For the comp, I would have put them in the final four for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. I kind of uh, miss them. I wish they were back. <laughs> no, we can have a consolation bracket next. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no more. You guys no are more, sick please. of chicken sandwiches. <laughs> uh, my family's upset that I won't be bringing home sandwiches anymore on uh, <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday, whatever day. All right, so this is the big dance. Go. These chicken sandwiches have been preparing all year for this. Uh, we have a six seed and a four seed with KFC and Zaxby's. So if you're just now showing up for the first time on this, Shame I'm going to explain it, right? I mean, yeah. Come on, guys, right? Uh, five points or 30 point scale, five points for presentation, five points for bread, five for sauce, five for toppings, 10 points for chicken. So you get 30 points per judge for a total of 90 points. Uh, we have had one tiebreaker. So we got lucky, I think, on that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. KFC sandwich. Start with the six seed. Presentation. Megan, four. I gave it a five myself. Magic Man gave it a four. Mine, I thought it, looked, it was beautiful. It was a pretty chicken sandwich. Like like yours from last week, mine looks like it got thrown up against the wall. Okay. Um, and stepped on. So there was that. It was tough coming out of the gate already. Yeah, this mine looked like the picture you see on the, you know, well, the menu. <laughs> yeah, mine looked good. Just, you know, it's not a five. I it wasn't a five, it. but it was, it was a strong contender. Gotcha. All right. <laughs> uh, KFC bread, three and a half from Brigham, four from myself, and five from Magic Man. Mine was uh, day old. 
It was stale. Oh. Considering mine came from yep. a Taco Bell KFC, I was All right. Mine you was get too. Chalupa with it, but I think <laughs> I think mine was uh, a day old, mm. and you did, didn't get a chalupa with it. Yeah, I, I need to have a proper KFC. Yeah. Uh, sauce, uh, which is mayonnaise, 2.5 from Big N, 3 for myself, and 2 from Magic Man. If I go back through the records, I'm pretty sure Magic Man scored a 2 on every mayonnaise. Because <laughs> yeah. he loves it so. I believe so. <laughs> Says enough there. Um, yeah, I mean, any big thoughts on the mayonnaise, Big N? No, it was just it was it was a little sweet. I did taste it on the side, you know. It was a okay. little sweet. It was pretty good, but I get a like a tartar sauce sauce vibe from that. I can see yet. that. Well, I think because those pickles are so big, you know. Maybe. Uh, what are we on to? Toppings. So speaking of pickles, four. <laughs> we're big in three from me, and uh, two from Magic Man. Is that per pickle scoring? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Those <laughs> those um, pickles were massive this time. Like, I mean, it took over the whole sandwich. And oh, wow. I know we talked about pickles before, but I mean, this thing was huge. So that was a large pickle, my friend. So too, the next too, one too big. Is, is the chicken. Uh, about, so I compared, I really got nitpicky on the scoring this time myself. Yeah. Um, and the scores kind of show that, I think. Uh, but the chicken, so I just want to, I'm going looking back up for a second to see okay. how many chicken patties or chicken breasts have scored a nine. Because there's a nine next to this KFC chicken under next to Biggin. The only other chicken to receive a nine in this competition was the Chick fil A. So just throwing so, that out there. Here's the thing with the with the chicken. It mine was so thick and juicy. Uh and the breading was was perfect, I think, on this one, where it was so crunchy. Um, and the eleven herbs and spices, I think, kind of did it for me. Mm. Uh before I didn't get it from that, but this one was really uh, thick right. and juicy. If it's a chicken sandwich, this was a massive chicken sandwich. It seemed bigger than the last one I got, and juicier. Yeah, uh, Magic Man and I both gave it eights, which is still yeah. very high score. But just the nine kind of threw me off there. You know, it was it was a massive I'm chicken glad, sandwich. I'm glad you had a good chicken sandwich. Yeah. So that brings us to 23 total from Biggin, 23 yep. from myself, and 21 from Magic Man. Magic Man, how are you feeling at this point? With chicken sandwiches and where we're at in the oh, in the bracket, chicken sandwiches. I'm tired of eating them. Um, <laughs> the bracket, um, it, it, I think it's a good bracket. Um, looking forward to seeing what the uh, what the winner is here. When you when we first put this out, did you think any way, shape, or form Zaxby's versus KFC? No, I figured it would have been. Like Saxby's versus um, Chick Fil A, or or I'm gonna I don't know that the top ones. Popeyes are, maybe. Are, yeah, the top the top the top three I can think of would be uh, Zaxby's, Popeyes, and Bojangles. Oh wow! Oh, okay, interesting. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the I, final I four almost. Yeah, you? I didn't know who would have been the fourth one, but I would have I would have thought yeah, Popeyes. Bojangles and um, Chick Fil A. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I so thought that's a I thought, sixty-seven. Sorry, go ahead. I, I was I was thinking KFC or Chick Fil A was going to run away with it. Priest oh. Ryan, what what were your thoughts? Where did you we put this together? I, so yeah, um, I mean Chick Fil A is always a contender. I, you know, I thought K, the Popeyes would be super strong. Mm. I knew Zaxby's if they. This sandwich is a brand new sandwich. Right. Looked like it could totally go, go for it, and you know, you know, I love Bojangles. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't think Bojangles would go that far, but just because it's a different, it's not playing the same game anymore. Yeah. Now they and that Bojangles, I don't even know if it tastes good. You did like a pickle and a nicer bun and a little bigger piece of chicken. 
Yeah. I don't know how it, to play. If you put in a bigger piece of chicken, I think you got something there. Maybe if you get a double chicken Cajun filet. Okay. You order just a Cajun filet with two pieces of chicken on there. Hey, we can try it. That'd do the I'm trick, sure I think. That we're going to make Magic Man eat chicken sandwiches every week from here on out. <laughs> yeah, next is Different the West Coast Chicken Sandwich Challenge. So we'll find something out there, you know. I need you to go to Chick-fil-A, get the Chick-fil-A bun, the uh, the Wendy's uh, chicken, and we'll just we'll make uh, Frankenstein well, listen, chicken sandwiches there's, for you. There's a, something to be said for, like, sauce and tenders or to see how what compliments – Mm. you know yep anyway all right uh so, so 67 was the total out of 90 for the mm-hmm. kfc sandwich which is a it was a good that's a, a good, good score yeah that's uh i mean looking back um that's a very high that's one of the highest scores so it's, one of the higher, some, it's the top three to point wise probably all right let's go to right. zaxby's what are we doing zaxby's all right Again, same point system, uh, presentation-wise, four and a half from Biggin, four from me, and four from Magic Man. Mine looked, did not look, it was squished a little bit. Oh, okay. And I, only, I only deducted a point for that. But looking at the two next to each other, KFC looked better in my case. Okay. Uh, bread, four from Biggin, five from myself, and five from Magic Man. Uh, the bread's just, uh, I like the bread better. Yep. It's just period. <laughs> I was fresh. It wasn't stale. So there's yeah. that. Uh, Magic Man, you gave it the same score. So yes. bread's bread, right? Yep. Didn't taste like tacos. <laughs> that's good. Okay. That's a bonus because it wasn't at a taco place. <laughs> so that's very good. Um, sauce was a Zach sauce in this case. Four from Biggin, five from me, and three from Magic Man. Um, so I guess you don't love the Zach sauce. Is that, I'm not a sauce person, but you know, hmm. Zach's has a, it's all right. It's all right. Okay. It's better than mayonnaise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Better than mayonnaise. <laughs> what was like the sauce ratio to you guys on your sandwiches? I think Zach's has put a little bit too much on. Hmm. Hmm. I like the fact that they put it on, on top and bottom. And I've said that multiple times. Like that, that to me seals the deal. They don't just go one side. They put it on both. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cause yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, toppings. This is again, pickles, uh, three from Biggin, uh, which is down pickles. from the KFC four from me, which is more than the KFC score and three from magic man. So there must've been three pickles. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> it's been a few days since I ate it. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, I AB'd these. Uh, you probably did the same thing. And for my t- palate, I preferred the Zaxby's pickle, just from a taste perspective. Yeah, yeah the KFC was too distracting of the sandwich, I thought. Mm, yeah, it was just uh, it was too big. I can't, I can't, uh, now it's hard to explain, but it was, I think the KFC pickle was saltier, maybe. Mm. Possibly. Okay. That's fresh. If I had to get, I don't know, it's been a day for me. So yeah. now for the main event, the chicken eights all the way down. Yep. This was super, though. So I scored these both identically. The Zaxby's was a slightly bit juicier than the KFC, but the, that those 11 herbs and spices go a long way mm-hmm. yep. on that sandwich. So for me, the chicken, I really couldn't make a decision. It was a tie. Wow. I was like Magic Man was very close as well. So eights. Yeah. All right. Let's reveal the winner. Yep. So here we go. 23 and a half from Biggin total. 26 from me and 23 for myself. So that uh, gives us a grand total of 72.5. Zaxby's takes the championship by less than five points or five and a half points. Math. <laughs> There's one shining moment. Thank you, Zaxby's. You won. <laughs> We're going to get in trouble for, for doing this. So yeah. The, so so now, we, I didn't say this before, but now this is the only chicken sandwich you guys can eat for a year. This is actually chicken sandwich. I'm just throwing out there. 
Oh, okay. Ooh, I'm I'm, I'm really hoping Zaxby's will will listen to the show <laughs> and then give us free Zaxby's for there a year. You so right, yeah. I mean, you could be the official chicken sandwich of the Southern Fried Philosophy podcast. There we go. Yeah, 2021. I, I have put out feelers to Bojangles to try to let up, try to be a sponsor because I mean yeah. we got the same colors, like basically the logo is the same. It'd be right. perfect. But I mean, hey, I mean, they, they, they had keep... Jake Delhomme on there. Come on. I mean, who wouldn't want this? Right. Yeah. So that's it, gentlemen. We are done with the chicken sandwiches. Um, I don't know what we're going to talk about now. Now that I have we have so many ideas for for another bracket <laughs> when you're ready for it, just. Sort of uh, just some some behind the scenes things. Uh, Producer Brian's neighbor dropped off some dum dums, uh, and yes. and he texted us in the group chat saying, "Well, I think we found another bracket. We're going to do dum dum <laughs> flavors." Yeah. Well, and she dropped off a bag of one flavor. Right. It was the, I didn't know you could order one flavor. This is like probably f- three hundred cream soda dum dums. Oh wow. I like cream soda. It's good, yeah. Yeah. What's interesting is the picture on the wrapper isn't like a picture of a bottle of cream soda. It's like Mm. pineapple and something else. So I can't help but taste that in the back of my brain when I put it in my mouth. It's like someone, you know, drink that fizzy water. Uh It's like you drink it. It says lime on the can. But if anyone yells out any other flavor, you're going to taste that when you're drinking it. Yeah. It's like bourbon. Yeah. So I was thinking we could do a uh, Taco Bell menu bracket maybe. Just take the whole menu and just see what the best thing on Taco Bell is. Does Who's it have to that? be? Does it have to be at a Taco Bell only, or can it be a Taco Bell KFC? <laughs> oh, that that would make it more interesting. You're yeah. not gonna eat everything off the menu. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. So uh, we appreciate you tuning in, being with us through the chicken bracket. We'll try to figure out some other bracket coming up, probably, hopefully, less expensive. Mm. But um, there's that. Um, again. So here we go. We're going to have uh, our guest, Doug Knoll. He's coming up on the show. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and play that music. All right. I think that that wraps it up, right? Yeah. Cool. And for those on the live stream who are just joining, we already did the uh, interview with the guest. So we're just doing things in a little bit of a mixed up sequence today. But... (laughs) Brian will work his magic, and uh, it'll be good when it comes out on Monday. Copy and paste. I couldn't. I couldn't so keep going for another interview because I have got to pee like a racehorse right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, without further ado, you guys can keep talking, but I've got to go. All uh, right, I, I'll be right back. But... All right, we'll see All you right. soon. Should I stop the live stream? Yeah, let's uh, say goodbye. Good. Biggins leaving, so the show's over, folks. Uh, Roddy has says who had the match. Who had the best mashed potatoes? Popeyes is the best mashed potatoes, or is it? My daughter would agree with KFC having the best mashed potatoes. That's her new favorite restaurant. If you can believe that. How is Biggin's camera still shaking? And he's not. Well, he's, he lives in the old house, so the whole place shakes when no, you walk. That's true. That's true. Okay, well, I'll uh, do the outro music and stuff. Hey, everybody, thanks for watching. Do it for Dale. What? We'll freaking see you later. <laughs> uh, Rod, you got to find a better chicken sandwich at the restaurant. You're listening to the SFP Radio Network.